Today's review is on a much more affordable watch, which I think is an absolute cracker. So I suggest that we get right on with it. It's all I could think of. Sir Watch Geek. Sir Watch Geek. Sir Watch Geek. Sir Watch Geek. Hello fellow watch fans and welcome to another video from me, Sir Watch Geek. Now, before we start, I'd just like to say that I have just this morning reached 1,000 subscribers. So many, many thankings and big up respect in the area. I can never do that. To all you fine folk who seem to enjoy this complete drivel that I post. It's hugely, hugely appreciated. Thank you. So as I said at the beginning, a complete contrast today to my last video, which was on the 2020 Rolex Submariner Blue Z. If you haven't watched that review yet, I'll leave a link in the description. Or one of those card things at the end of the video. I don't know which, but don't go yet. No, don't go watch that yet. Hang around and watch my review on the Seacos Suges. Su Suges? Suges? Suges. I, I guess we'll just have to get on with it. <coughs> Quick wrist check before we start as we are on... No, because that's not focusing. Whoa, there you go, that's focusing. Quick wrist check before we start as we are on um, value for money watches today. I'm wearing my Steel Dive 6105 Captain Willard Homage. A steel at just under £100. Okay, so let's get on with the quick, quick box unboxing. This is the watch, very no frills cardboard box. Uh, and this is the uh, little inlay that has, um, where we go, have the instruction book, which I've not looked at. To be honest, who bothers with these anyway? Remove that. And there is the watch. Now, I've seen this um, branded as being a Suges, and I've seen it branded as Seacos, and I've also seen it as a Seagull Suges. Basically, it's one of the many variants of the Seagull 1963, this one being a Panda dial version, uh, 40 millimeters. So there isn't any brand history. And as with many of these kind of watches from AliExpress, it is what it is. From AliExpress, as I say, costing £145 and taking only six days to arrive to the UK from China. Can't complain so far. And I have to say at this point that it didn't actually come on this leather strap, on which more later. So onto the measurements and specs of this watch then. We have a 40mm diameter watch, thickness of 13.7mm, which is slightly bigger than the quoted 13mm, 20mm uh, lug width and a lug to lug of 503 highly polished stainless steel case all round with a nicely domed sapphire crystal. Now I can't check whether it is or not because I don't have one of those pointy diamond tester things just yet. Star motif on the crown as you can see there and if we go straight on to the case back this is why these type of watches are so popular. We have the extremely pleasing to look at Seagull ST1901 hand winding movement that just looks absolutely gorgeous through the display case back. This particular one has the swan's neck regulator, but you can save a few quid and uh, have it without if you so wish. To be honest, I'm not about to crack open the back and do any regulating. Um, that, that thought scares me to death. I'd probably end up breaking it. 
Popping it on the time grapher shows a very healthy beat error, 21,600 vibrations per hour, and an average accuracy of plus 12 seconds a day, depending on which lift angle you use. Now, I've tried to do some research on this, and it seems that um, the lift angles are quoted that are quoted are quite varied. I've seen anything from 42 degrees up to 52 degrees. So I set the time grapher to 50 degrees as that one seemed to be the most reliable um, lift angle. Plus 12 seconds a day, that's pretty typical for the ST19 movements. It's not something to get too upset about really. And uh, the power reserve, I think, is 40, maybe 42 hours. So, on to the dial. <coughs> now, there are a few... Oh, God, I'm sorry. Now, there, um, there are a few... There are a few options on the dial design when searching for this model. This one has no numbers, just applied buttons at the hour markers and printed text which is very, very crisp indeed. Pencil design, hour and minute hands in silver with a black needle chronograph hand with a red tip. And there's nothing, I was gonna say there's nothing better than having a red tip, but actually, um, no, there are certain circumstances where you might not actually want a red tip. Black subdials with silver hands at the three and nine. The three position is the 30 minute chronograph timer. And at nine, we have the watch seconds counter. A beautiful cream, slightly off white cream dial with a black fixed inner tachymeter bezel. Now the loom um, is pretty poor, to be honest, as can be seen here. Um, I just can't seem to charge it enough to glow for more than a few seconds, but I can forgive it that, considering the overall specs of the watch, really. Now, I had someone on Instagram comment, why a homage and not an original design like Breitling or Hamilton? Well, first of all, £145 versus £6,600 for a Breitling Premiere. That's the first reason. And um, which, what was the very first Panda design chronograph anyway? I mean, there are, there are loads out there. And as we know, every watch in existence, more or less, unless you're going really out there, takes on design inspiration from other watches. See, look, look at the Rolex Submariner. It's the most largely copied watch ever. Every watch is is based on other watches. This is a Panda Dial chronograph. It's going to look similar to other Panda Dial chronographs. There you go. Now saying that, I do actually have the, um, the Breitling Top Time Deus. Again, if you haven't seen that review, I'll leave links to that as well. Now this is not meant to be a comparison by any means. But if you look at these two watches side by side, you can very much see design similarities there. They look almost identical, really. £4,100, £145. It doesn't take a uh, scientist to work out that that's a lot cheaper. That's a stupid thing to say. Pretty obvious, isn't it? I've got a degree in stating the obvious. What I'm trying to say is that you do not have to spend a lot of money to get a great watch. Look at that. If you weren't in the, the watch, no. If you weren't a watch fan, you could be wearing either of these, really. And to all intents and purposes, th they could be from the same make, can't they? They look very, very similar. I've said it time and time again. I'm not a watch snob. I don't like watch snobs. There are brilliant value watches to be had out there, and this is definitely a case in point. So finally, on to the bracelet. Um, I opted for the stainless steel bracelet, which, to be honest, was not very nice. It was a bit cheap and cheerful. Um, it does come with curved end links, uh, but these are incredibly ill-fitting, as you can see here. The gaps between the links and the case are not, not very nice at all, really. So I quickly swapped it out 
for this black leather strap which cost me about a tenner and I think that looks uh, looks the business really and in hindsight I wished I'd have bought it with the leather strap straight away it was cheaper still but there you go I always tend to buy a watch with the stainless strap if I can because it's then cheaper to buy a leather strap than if you bought the watch with a leather strap and then try to source a stainless didn't quite work in this case but as I say hindsight is a wonderful thing so um there you go really that was a bit quick wasn't it um i i think this represents um, amazing value for money i think it looks great um it's cheap it's affordable it took no time to come and i'm really pleased with it what what do you think as as always uh, drop me a comment as to what you think do you like this kind of watch uh the there are no downsides for me at all other than the loom isn't brilliant but i i'm not a loom freak you know um it wears well fits a treat gorgeous movement um i don't really do like it i've just realized all the way through this that the chronograph hand was at the bottom so let me just show you that working a nice click there to get the chronograph working and the faintest of touches oh just pops it straight back to the top and that feels and sounds really nice indeed so that's it there you go that's your lot um, thank you very much as always to everybody who has liked and liked and subscribed if you haven't liked and subscribed please like and subscribe i'm hugely grateful it does enable me to to uh, carry on and make videos um which is what i love doing so until next time watch fans take care stay safe and i'll see you soon i hope this is in focus